Hi, and welcome to this week's Mental Health Mondays. I am Carrie Biscalonis, founder and managing director at Reset Brain and Body, an integrative mental health care practice located in and around Plymouth, Michigan. Okay, so comparison. We all do it. We compare ourselves, our situations, what we have, what we don't have to those around us. And I want to first validate this experience and help you recognize the fact that this is a very normal, very normal biological phenomenon. And what I mean by that is that we are naturally and innately born to compare, to differentiate, to judge. And the reason we're supposed to be doing this is for survival, for self-protection. The more that we can distinguish ourselves from other people, the more then that we can ascertain threats around us, the more that we can then establish our own sense of superiority, which then feels good onto our ego, which then helps us build more confidence, helps us then garner an attractive mate for ourselves to continue on our DNA. So yes, if your mind just went, wait, 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 what? <laughs> That is evolutionary psychology. That is evolution. That is a lot of times why people say human beings are on this earth to continue to pass on their DNA to the next generation. So this practice of comparison, differentiating, judging, setting apart is a very human and biological and neatly driven type of practice. It doesn't mean that it works for us all the time, especially when we're doing it in a way that is superfluous, right? Especially when we're doing it in a way that's comparing things that feel very egoic in a perspective that is uh, not leaving us feeling actually in a superior position that then makes us want to go out in the world and change the world and make it a better place um when in fact it's actually making us feel pretty down about ourselves pretty negative pretty self-critical guilty uh, about the way that we've been acting so when i first learned this quote it changed everything for me and many of you might be familiar with the passage but it is that comparison is the thief of joy and it really is true comparison is the thief of joy when you think about all the times that you have been stuck in comparison, if you are comparing yourself against a friend, a colleague, your kid against someone else's kid, but even more so in what a lot of us do without even recognizing that this is comparison, that we compare ourselves to a former version of ourselves. Oh, when I was 22, things were so much better. Uh, you know, I was 18, when I was 30, when I was 35. And this is all comparison. And again, it robs us of this joy. And even more so, it robs us of the present moment. It takes away from all that is good in the here and the now. And that's really a shame. Because if you were not clouding your mindset with this comparison mindset, you would be able to see clearly that you do have plenty to be proud of, plenty that is good enough. But also in our culture, we are driven by this need to accumulate. And this is not something that you are doing to yourself. This is something that's happening to us, right? Just living in a capitalistic culture, we are driven to want more, to need more, to incessantly need. And so because of that, how will you ever have enough and be enough? There will always be the next thing that you're striving for. It could be something materialistic like a house or a car. It could be something like a vacation or just a better job, more freedom. It could be something like personal development, more peace of mind, a different body. Social media doesn't help if your feed is fueled with people telling you what more that you need and all the ways that you are supposed to be changing yourself, then how will you ever be content with who you are? How will you ever feel like you're ever enough and what you have is enough? 
So the first thing I encourage you to do is take a hard look at what you consume. Where are you gathering your information about how you inform yourself on what is enough and if you have enough? Are the people that you surround yourself bringing out this inner gremlin of keeping up with the Joneses? Are they constantly striving for more, feeling like they must prove more to others? Are they flashing around items, trying to show off what else they've accumulated? Are those the people you want to be around? Are those the right influencers for you? If you are on social media often, take a look at your feed. What are influencers there to do? To sell you. How many of them do you really need on part of your feed? How many things do you really need to be sold on? Do you need more? I don't know. <laughs> what, what are you people selling these days? Smoothie packets? exercise videos, organic hemp tote bags. Will that probiotic change your life? I don't know, maybe, <laughs> but that person's probably gonna make sure that you think that you cannot be healthy without that probiotic. Be cautious, be cautious on what you're consuming. We have to be our own best advocate. So building that awareness of, okay, I, I know what I really need. I know what I really want. I can't keep letting the world, influencers, other people, make me feel like I need something, make me feel like I should want something. Catching ourselves when we're being influenced. Okay, secondarily, when I go, when I talked about being present, this is a practice, being present. Because when we are stuck in comparison of wanting and needing and shooting and grasping and attachment for more, we rob ourselves again of being content with what is. And the practice of gratitude is going to be the biggest anchor for you to be able to practice more presence and acceptance and contentment with what is. And now a lot of you talk about gratitude and I know we talk about gratitude all the time. It's like, okay, have a gratitude journal, write down every single day things that you're grateful for. That's transactional. Having a gratitude journal is transactional. It's another task, it's a duty. To me, a gratitude journal is an exercise to inform a habit. And that habit is something that ideally drives a feeling. Gratitude is about a feeling. So I have a gratitude journal and actually a book that I'm gonna drop in the comments here is a new book that was referred to me called Magic. And it's a 28 day exercise about really cultivating gratitude and the full robust feeling, emotional type of way that we really want to practice gratitude with. I've been practicing gratitude, practicing gratitude. I say it in quotes because I, I have thought that I've been practicing it for eight years. Every day reflecting on things that went well, every day writing down some special moments, things that I'm grateful for. And there were times when I would reflect on what happened the day before and I would smile and I would have this warm feeling but then it would, it would go, and I wouldn't necessarily say that it, it would carry me through the day. Now, this practice I'm doing now is about consciously bringing gratitude into almost every single one of your experiences throughout the day. And that takes practicing gratitude to this next level. And it really, again, is this kind of anchor to pulling us back into the present moment, to practicing contentment, satisfaction, enoughness so that we don't get pulled into comparison. We don't get influenced by the shoulds and the wants and the needs and the not good enoughs. So part of this exercise is that you have the habit of practicing gratitude on paper, you know, writing things down, but then we cultivate the feeling and we do that by asking the question, well, why am I grateful for this? How does this make me feel when I think about it? And then as I think about this, I say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. For many of you that might have a practice with 
prayer. This might feel like counting your blessings. It might feel like praying at the end of the night or beginning of the day. And so you might already be doing this, but how can we just level it up? So two things in warding off comparison. One, catching yourself, the ways that you're influenced, the way that you're being, con you're consuming information that make you feel like you need more, that you are not enough. That's that awareness that we talk about over and over and over again, just the catching. Oh, there that is again. There's the comparison gremlin. Oh man, she's nasty today. Why? What's happening? Am I not being present? Am I not being grateful for what I have? Am I not accepting for what is? Am I not content for what is in this moment as being enough? You know, this past weekend, I was actually home in our hometown of Plymouth. In the summers, we usually travel. And I usually travel because I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to be near water. I need to be near the lake. I need, you know, more outdoorsy. And I would have this storyline that like being home, this home that we've chosen isn't enough. So I need to go, I need to escape. You might know where I'm going with this. So this last weekend we stayed in town and we just fully enjoyed our town. And I think with COVID, so many of us maybe haven't had that experience in a while of like actually enjoying where we live and the people that we love and our communities. And it felt so good. And I made a point to like consciously just soak it all in and be like, wow, this was great. This is so great. I love this. This felt really good to connect to what already is enough and not be wanderlusting for something that could be better or different. And it's just a really liberating feeling, right? When we finally settle into like, this is good. This is right. This is enough. When we make that decision within ourselves that we can be content with the way things are. I think so often we end up making decisions that are out of alignment that maybe not necessarily that we regret, but later we'll be like, Ooh, I don't know if that should have been the right decision because we're chasing, because we're seeking for something more that isn't genuine. Whereas if we actually settled and paused into that contentment, that peace, that gratitude for what is, Maybe life would be a lot easier. Maybe we could be easier on ourselves. Maybe we could find that the difficulties that we have in our life, we end up creating for ourselves. Food for thought. All right. Happy Monday. As always, it's a pleasure being with you. I'll see you next week.